This is the completed Teleco Dam near Lenore City, Tennessee, a project conceived in the early days of the Tennessee Valley Authority, postponed by World War II priorities, revised in the early 1960s, but then stalled for a decade because of lawsuits. It has actually turned brothers against brothers, sisters against sisters, and families against families. In the Teleco Reservoir area, there are well over 280 archaeological sites and these represent an, a significant and irreplaceable resource, a, a continuum of uh, history of human existence. Well, uh, I guess you, you might say, it's a place you can go and, and re regain, the, you regain the strength of your life. We have uh, human rights and dignity at stake here today. The TVA has said, they back the water up, we will have industry somewhere to get a job. Well, I'm old, I ain't got no home. The damage is done, I watch the trees fall and the animals run. The tiny snail darter once stood in your way. So you up and moved him and dug in his grave. Farewell to the river, farewell to the land. Farewell to the river. I'm sorry, but they did not understand. At the heart of the Teleco dilemma has been a conflict between creating a reservoir which would produce jobs from recreation, energy, and other industries in an area with traditionally high unemployment and outmigration, and the preservation of rich farmland, a beautiful river, and an historic valley where people have lived for at least 12,000 years. What is the promise of Teleco? Well, the Tennessee Valley Authority has justified the project this way. 38%, by far the largest share, is for flat water recreation, the lakes to be 16,000 acres, and the 38th TVA lake within that area. 19% of the benefits of Teleco will be from shoreline development, meaning close to 8,000 homes and several industrial parks. 6% of the project will be devoted to enhancing the valley's fish and wildlife. Hydroelectric power and navigation account for 11% each, the Teleco Dam, though, doesn't actually generate the power. It simply diverts the water to nearby Fort Loudon Dam, so additional power can be created. How much additional power? Enough for about 20,000 homes. I prefer it to be backed up. I mean, I'm for it. Well, I am, I guess, one of the young people in this area. We have nothing. I mean, there are nothing for the young people. I'm not talking about recreation. I'm talking about jobs, future. Tomorrow night, we'll hear more from Ricky Harrell and his friend, Beryl Mosier. They've been on opposite sides of the Teleco controversy, but can still sit down together and agree to disagree, unlike some of their Von Orr, Tennessee neighbors. Von Orr is to become a lakefront town when the Teleco Reservoir is filled. And as we'll see tomorrow night, getting through this past decade has not been an easy one for the community. John Alexander, Action News 36. This is Von Orr, Tennessee, less than an hour's drive upstream from the Teleco Dam. The Tennessee Valley Authority's Teleco project is in an area with a long history of high unemployment. Just two years ago, 15% of the people in that area were without jobs. We have nothing. I mean, there are nothing for the young people. I'm not talking about recreation. I'm talking about jobs, future. I myself lived here in Monroe County all my life. I myself have to leave here go to Knoxville for work, which uh, I'd say 90% of the people in this area do. Burl Mosier is one of those who also leaves Von Orr every morning. He works at the post office in Maryville. He's also a city judge. But Mosier does not share Ricky's enthusiasm that Teleco is a panacea for Von Orr's economic ills. During our conversation, Mosier pointed out that TVA pays local governments in lieu of taxes. He says that amounts to about one-third of the local tax rate, and that with 38,000 acres being removed from the tax rolls, it's possible that whatever higher wages come with Teleco will be eaten up by higher taxes. So what they've got is a block of land for 33 miles up the river, and I don't know how wide it is, but you've got 38,000 acres of land between two roads, and the TVA owns it all, well, approximately all of it. There's maybe two or three houses within that, but most of that is politics politicians that swapped out on the road builder. 
Moser has fought TVA for more than a decade. His house is to go underwater when the reservoir is filled. TVA offered him over $12,000 for five acres and his house, but he maintained that it simply wasn't fair. Beryl Moser fought the appraisal through the courts. The three judges sitting on the case were familiar to him. The same three men that appraised it was the three men that went before for a trial, paid by the TVA. The TVA has said, they backed the water up, we will have the industry somewhere to get a job. Well, I'm not looking for it for myself, but I'm looking at it for the young people, the young people that's coming up, somewhere for them to work, not have to leave home. TVA believes the Teleco project will produce more than 7,000 jobs in the next 25 years. Many of them will be related to tourism, recreation, and industry. The uh, cost of this project versus the benefits. A lot of people don't know that uh, that dam doesn't even, or it's not even designed to generate any electricity. There's no uh, generator design in it whatsoever. It'll only supply water to another lake, of which is, uh, there's 37 lakes, I understand, within a 100 mile radius of that area. So uh, it's the economic situation is very important. It's, when it was first designed, it was designed as a flat water recreation and an industrial project. But uh, my understanding now is that the industrial part of it's not even feasible. So basically what you'll end up with is a flat water recreation project. Back in the late 60s, the Boeing Aircraft Corporation was involved in the Teleco project. It would be a magnet to attract other industries, and a new 21st century city would be built called Timberlake. However, Boeing felt that economic conditions weren't stable enough to get involved in the project, so it pulled out. TVA has made no announcements of any major industrial plants willing to fulfill that void. What's going to happen to us? I mean, we've got a city right here, Von Orr, which everybody in the country talks about Telco, Telco, Telco. They don't think about us, Von Orr. They don't mention Von Orr. Have you heard it anywhere, Von Orr? It affects Von Orr a lot more than it affects anybody else. I say, damn the TVA, and say the little thing. Why can't they see what that river means to me? Among those who are skeptical of TVA's promises are environmentalists, archaeologists, historians, and Cherokee Indians. October 20th, they gathered near Von Orr by the banks of the Little Tennessee River. Now the Cherokee stands proud with a tear in his eye. Just what will be lost when the Teleco Reservoir is filled? We'll have some answers tomorrow night. John Alexander, Action News 36. But the white man's never... Now the Cherokee stands proud with a tear in his eye. He cried, don't let them flood the land where my ancestors lie. October 20th, environmentalists, historians, archaeologists, Cherokees, and others gathered for a two-day rally in a last-minute attempt to call enough attention to Teleco to stop the project. The Cherokees, concerned that the reservoir would flood their ancestral burial grounds on the site of their sacred city of Chota, were picking up where the tiny snail daughter suit had left off. God bless the Cherokee, because they're carrying on. God bless the Cherokee. Let's remember, the Cherokees were with us in 1970. They were with us in 1974. They're in the Little Tennessee River Alliance all through those years. They're the ones who can carry on now. Cherokee constitutional rights. We are entitled to the same rights as any other citizen by the First Amendment and by the American Indian Religious Freedom Act. You are aware that the white man became citizen of this country upon arrival. The black man was awarded citizenship in 1865. Women were allowed to vote in 1919, but we, the Native American Indians, did not become citizens of their own homeland until 1924. Last week, the U.S. Supreme Court refused to grant the Cherokee an injunction to stop the flooding of the Little Tennessee River Valley until their suit against TVA could be heard on its merits. The flooding will inundate one of America's richest valleys. It, it, it has been an argument, and this has come out uh, in trying to come out with cost-benefit ratios, for example, in the whole teleco controversy. How do you uh, to ascribe a value 
to an extremely rich valley such as this one. And I say it's extremely rich, perhaps one of the richest in the southeast. This is principally because you do have uh, the Overhill Cherokee villages there, which is a, uh, a marvelous uh, opportunity to study uh, the adaptation and the acculturation that went on by the Cherokee as they interacted with the French and with the British. Much of uh, Southern colonial history was played out in that valley. Many of the, the Cherokees uh, that we have names for, you can read in your American history books, were active during the Revolution, French and Indian War, all extremely important. The Cherokee have always talked about the Teleco Dam area as Hana Diga Dadlehnu'i, which means that's where we began. Also, our religion, our organized religion, originates from that area. They used to hold their meetings at a place called Unawotla'i, which means the banks of the river. But that word originated from the banks of the Little Tennessee River. The Cherokee towns included Tennessee, from which the name Tennessee came. Chota, a sacred city of refuge, not unlike some of those described in the Old Testament. And Tuskegee, the birthplace of Sequoia, who gave the Cherokees a written language. However, before the Cherokee, there were scores of other Indian cultures who had lived and died in the valley. Archaeologists, financed to a large extent through TVA, have found that 9,000 years before the Egyptians built the pyramids, survivors of the Ice Age hunted and fished here made textiles, wove baskets, and handcrafted pottery. Every little bit, uh, every little thing provides a piece, in a sense, to the great puzzle of trying to reconstruct a culture. Now, we can't dig up a belief system, a religion. What we dig up are the material parts of that, the, what remain. Among our older people here on the reservation today, I think there is a lot of emotional feeling because I've talked to several of the older people and they uh, indicate that they, you know, they have memories of uh, Teleco Plains and this area, this area over there. I think our younger people uh, don't know the history of the, uh, of the Teleco project. They don't know the cultural and the uh, preservative stuff that we need to preserve over there. What have archaeologists learned about the prehistory of the Little Tennessee River Valley? Why do the Cherokees consider it sacred? Join us for a half hour Action News special report, Teleco, The Lake of Tears, December 1st at 7 p.m. And we'll try to answer those questions. John Alexander, Action News 36.